Okay, so after inventory, you then have to instrument the system and start collecting the data that you want. Some of it's automatically on, some of it is not. Primarily, I want to talk about two th three things, SAR, Performance Copilot, and CSA Accounting. Tomorrow, we'll get into PBS and get into Torque PBS Accounting as well. So to begin with, Heisenberg Principle basically says looking at the system will impact the system. Using S-Trace will slow down a process because now this process has uh, things spying on it and it's got a lot of data that's being written out. There are times where I have a performance incident occurring and once I attach to S-Trace, the intensity of the application's I.O., for example, goes down because it's now been throttled back by S-Trace and then my problem goes away. Disconnect from S-Trace, the application is no longer throttled back by the trace data, does more I.O. per second, the I.O. intensity goes up and your problem comes back. We also have to talk about block counting. There is a tool called GPRO that adds code to your program and counts every time you go through a kernel or, or a application routine. So also referred to as profile guided optimization. PGO, and this will slow down code because you're adding instructions to every subroutine. What the uh, compiler will do is instrument the code with a profile guided optimization, adding counters around each subroutine. And then when the program runs, it generates a profile report that then on a second compilation pass, we'll use the profile guided optimization from the first pass to make decisions on compiling for the second pass. In particular, profile guided optimization will sort the library routines and the uh, application routines so that ones that are commonly calling each other are on the same page to reduce instruction TLB misses. And that's one payoff with profile guided optimization try to reorder the executable so the things that are commonly jumped between each other are on the same page boundary. We're also going to get into accounting data. Now, accounting data itself is not a load, but post-processing is. So the commands like CSA build will use CPU time depending upon how much data they generate. SAR is actually the lowest impact application. And by the way, nowadays with 4096 CPUs, we do have things going on in the kernel to reduce contention on slash proc. So anything like top going into slash proc slash stat for CPU utilization is creating contention. And we're working on kernel changes to get that kind of thing uh, lower impact. Also performance, copilot, and SAR basically look at the same data. But SAR is an ASCII tool, and Performance Copilot is a GUI. We're going to start using them in detail tomorrow. So first, sampling versus block counting. Sampling is where I periodically go out and check the program counter. So I was using perf a little bit earlier, perf top, to see where my CPUs were. But again, my CPUs were idle, so there wasn't anything of interest to me. I was like 0.1% system time. Everything in that workload I was looking at was an I.O. bound type of situation. So PERF is a Linux tool that will automatically go out and periodically check the program counter to see where it is, where there's kernel routines or application routines or DSOs. We're also going to use a tool this week from NCSA, National Center for Supercomputer Applications, the PERF suite product they have, and a command called PS Run. So PS Run is going to get me down to line numbers in my program and also gets to hardware counters, what's called PAPI, Performance API, and be able to get to cache misses, TLB misses, floating point operations, hardware-specific counters. Both of those are sampling types of events. The other type of event block counting is that profile-guided optimization where I say, generate a binary that is profile ready. The other type of data that I'm looking at, a lot of it is frequency domain. SAR and PCP are simply saying, how many times per second is something happening? 
Whereas what I really want is everything I do is trying to get into the time domain and elapsed time components. So if it's an eight hour run, how much is user? You'll see what I'm typing here in a minute. System. I await. And memory weight. So I can be looking at good SAR data where everything looks behaving normally, but then bad uh, time domain, how long it's taking for things to run. So I need to actually, this is something known as Little's Law or Little's Utilization Law. When I have both system activity and time domain type of information, I can actually create an algebraic equation and do little, little utilization law and do performance modeling. The third type of data collection is when you actually get into developmental versus production. So in a developmental mode, I've got things like PAPI, performance API, the perf command, the PS run command, and the strace command. But I only use those when I'm trying to examine a problem. I don't run them all the time. But on a production system, particularly in your case, there is in your system a slash bar law uh, bar spool torque server underscore priv accounting file. And I gave you, and again we can get back to this, but I have a PBS sum and PBS WLA or a PBS dash report to generate a report from that file. We're going to get into that tomorrow once I get this stuff moved into a batch. So that's going to be one of your key production instrumentation files. I actually take that report and plot it. I'll show you that later in the week. So getting the data. First of all, in a large data center, large environment, you get a lot of data. I'm not going to collect one-second samples for a year. Having worked with this data for 30 years, 10 minutes every day is best for a weekly or monthly type of report. Now your granularity, if it's too tight of an interval, you're going to collect too much data. So I'm not going to try to collect uh, one-second samples. There's 86,400 seconds to a day. Thirty six hundred seconds to an hour. I don't want tons of data, particularly large disk farms, by the way, and multiple paths. So if I have 400 LUNs out there with eight paths to each, that's 3,200 data entry points for that disk farm. So some of these large disk farms, we don't collect per device data because that gets to be too big, unless there is a particular interval where something is happening. So we might collect it for a day to get a baseline or something, but we would not be collecting large disk farm data all the time. It just gets too big of a file. Aggregation, generally I'm looking at one or two second samples. If an event occurs, I'll usually do like a two minute sample, one or two minutes or maybe five minutes. And again, when I'm looking at baseline, daily, weekly, monthly, I look at 10 minute samples. And then there are tools and sites that can do daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly. For example, Ganglia does some of this. I do have Ganglia RPMs for you to install tomorrow. And Ganglia is also using this RRD database, which will reduce the granularity so that I don't have 10-minute samples for last week or last month. Also.
also in getting into the data, you got to be able. There's a ton of data there. You got to be able to put some of the data aside. Uh, basically, I say anything that's below like one percent, just push aside and put it into a category called other. Ignore it for now. And then consolidation. This is particularly for accounting. This is like a uh, ledger account and a ledger account name be in the category. So when I'm done, and by the way, PBS and Torque do have the options of specifying a application string that could be able to sort your jobs by some sort of functional category. So at the end of the month, you'd want to be able to consolidate down by your user ID. I don't really care about groups or session IDs. Consolidate by command name. Category is by functionality. And then class is by resource consumption. So I might generate what I call a scatter plot off the PBS accounting data, the torque accounting data, and see how much CPU, how much memory, and how much I.O. are moved by certain jobs. And by the way, by, uh, unfortunately, PBS torque did not give me I.O. statistics. I need to go into CSA accounting for that kind of thing. So let's move on here. So SAR is the first tool that I'm going to be using tomorrow. I use SAR to indicate normal or abnormal behavior. Again, if I can go to a whiteboard here, I'm going to do my health of the system. Periodic check of resource busy. I want to know percent busy and number of things using. So this is what SAR and PCP can give me. But I need to get into a quality of service which is really time to solution. I need time domain. I want elapsed time components. So if it's taking eight hours to run, how much of that eight hours is user time, system time, I wait time, Q wait time, things like that. And again, tomorrow I'm going to be going through both of these health of the system and quality of service metrics in more detail. And then Wednesday we will go into profiling. And in profiling, that's where I'm using strace or perf or ps run. By the way, in quality of service, I can use the time command or the PBS accounting or things like CSA accounting. And that's where we're going in this module. When I'm at the health of the system metrics, I'm like a shrink, a therapist. And I'm looking for behavioral problems. Every time I look at Dave Wright, he's busy, busy doing work. Maybe there's a problem. I don't know. Then when I go to my quality of service and get to the time domain and say, yeah, he's always busy, but it's taking him one hour to answer an email, then I've got to deal with the quality of service metrics and say what's happening during that hour to get that thing done. And then profiling, I'm getting down into an individual event. When I'm at the quality of service, I'm like an accountant. Where are resources going? When I am at the profiling level, I'm an efficiency expert. Sorry, efficiency expert, I'm looking for non-productive resource consumption. Just 
cut CPUs are busy does not mean they are getting work done. They could have contention or thrashing. And that's what we're going to get into with uh, analysis tomorrow. So whenever I'm going through this, I'm going through a drill here, health of the system, quality of service, and profiling. And that's what we're going to start tomorrow. Any questions right now? So SAR is like an inkbot test. Basically, looking for behavioral problems tells me where do I start and what do I look for. SAR can imply performance problems, but I call it a leap of faith because it doesn't tell you the effect of resource managers or schedulers. Some users could have good response, others could have bad response. It's the accounting data that I care about because that indicates the performance of the workbook, workload, the only place where timings are kept. And CS accounting has wait times. And there is a command called get delays in Linux that can also get to the wait times. I'm going to be using that later in the week. So you can have good SAR data and bad performance and bad SAR data and good performance. It depends upon what the resource that's bottlenecking is on. Everything could be asleep on a sleep lock, like we see a lot of our systems apparently sleeping. And the performance looks good, but if we actually look at those code fives, their performance is not very good. Now, PCP has more metrics than SAR. Basically, PCP has everything that SAR can get to with a GUI plus more. So tomorrow we're going to start using Performance Copilot. Now the data collection here is done by a command called SADC, System Activity Data Collection. By default there is a cron event that runs and it's typically going to run every 10 minutes and run a script called SA1. And when SA1 is done it's going to leave a binary file in var log SA with a date. D, S, A, and then a day. Now I'm going to go into here, there is a itsy sysstat, sysstat file. And in there is something called history. If I change history greater than 28, then it starts keeping track of the data on a per year month data. And you'll actually see a link from the SA directory into the year month directory. Now, also, periodically, cron is running an SA2 script. That cron event is usually not very good. I like to run the cron event at midnight every night, not every eight hours, for example. So when you run this cron event, the SAR command is going to read the binary file for the day and generate a SAR report, S-A-R, the R indicating that it is an ASCII report. And if we've got a history, then it's going to go into a year-month directory. Now if I just log in and type in SAR, by default it's going to this binary file here. If the cron events aren't turned on, then you're not going to get anything in that file. Also, I need to warn everybody here, particularly Brian and stuff, if I repartition and do uh, partitioning at the prom level and break the system up, that will change the SA binary files and you're basically no good for that day. You have to get rid of the file for the day. It does not handle CPU count changes. Now, generally, I'm using SAR for a baseline but then when I go live, I'm doing a SAR. Typically in class, I'm going to do one space five to look at five-second samples, five one-second samples. But I can only look at one thing at once. So I do like to do a SAR-O, dump it into a binary file, and then I use a dash F on that file, and then I can look at CPU or memory or something like that. Let me show you an example. I'm going to go share my desktop here. So if I do a SAR dash big A, one space two, for, for example, one space three, 
It's going to give me all of them, but they're all intermixed, and it, it's very hard to read that kind of report. So if I do a SAR-O, I'm just going to call it SA file, one space 15, for example. And it will still give me the CPU utilization. Again, I still see that I-08 that we were seeing. And I'm just going to break this out now. So now if I do a SAR-F on SA file, I can see the data that I just collected up to 43. There it is. But now I can actually go back and look at dash D, for example, on the disks and see what my disk drives are doing. Okay. And also I can go SAR dash R and look at memory. See that my memory is 88% used. Or SAR dash N and get my network. Again, for the networks, I'm going to have to do either specify the device. Let me just use ET80. Oops, didn't like that. Let me do an all. And then I'm able to see each of the individual devices and what they're doing for network traffic. So again, by using the dash O, and that O file can be saved off, sent to support people, things like that. And then I can go back through the file rather than trying this big A, which is all. So if I do that now on this dash FSA file, it's still a little bit easier to read now because the reports are all uh, together. But if I did that with a uh, one space two, notice they're all intermixed and it's very hard to read. Any questions right now? Let me go back to the presentation. So I was just trying to explain how I like to use the dash O option and save like two minutes worth of data, and then I can look at it later. By the way, PCP, TOP, and VMSTAT are all getting their data from slash PROC. There is some data that comes from slash SIF. We'll talk about that later. So, SAR is part of the SYSTAT package. It's loaded by default when you load SGI Foundation. There's a package called SGI Base Configuration that gives it as a de dependency. Makes it a dependency. Also, it'll be check config on during the boot process. Basically, during the boot process, there is a service script running called boot.sysstat, and it's going to create a link from the itsy sysstat directory into the itsy cron.d directory. And here I'm able to see a cron event for SA1 every 10 minutes all the time. And I've got another one here that's running every six hours, four times a day. And by the way, notice up here, the dash S all is giving me the disk activity. There are times when I have taken that off the report to save disk space. Again, if I had 400 LUNs and eight paths to them, that would be 3,200 device names, and that would make the SA file too large and cumbersome. So there's an itsy cron.d sysstat cron tab, and again, I do like to change this one and sometimes change this here. Now there is a sadc.lock file here. Sometimes during boot, it may take a while for sadc to run because that lock file has to get cleared up. If I was in the middle of a cron event and there was an SA1 that was running with an SADC lock file, and then we took a panic or something, that lock file might still exist on reboot. Also in lab, we're going to go in and edit the sysstat file to get the history up to 31 days. By default, it's seven days, and I don't want seven days. And also check the sysstat for, uh, cron tab for SA2. After SAR, we have Performance Copilot. Performance Copilot originally came from IRIX, uh, was made open source a few years ago. The GUIs and everything are now open source. And PCP does, does now work on other OSs. 
for example, down here, let me go share my desktop here. I'm going to see if I can get this to work. I have installed PCP on my Windows and it's native Windows. I don't have X11 running here. Oops, didn't like something. Okay, I may have to reinstall or update something newer here. Let me just try that again. Yeah, libgcc changed or something. I'll come back to that later. Again, the other way that I can get this PM chart working, I was going to try it from my Windows system and look at it, but I can also get it to, uh, I'm going to go to my system, get my remote desktop working. Again, that is not responding to me very well. So I'm going to do a service XDM restart. And I should have a desktop coming up here quickly. Uh, again, there is a load going on on the system, but there we are. Come on. There we are. I'm going to log in as root. SGI, SGI. And I was trying to get PM chart working on my Windows system, but for some reason it, something has changed. I'm going to reinstall it probably as a lab exercise tomorrow and see how that goes. Okay, so now let me try a PM chart. And in here now I can file, open view, look at CPU utilization. Let me get that in the background. So here's my SAR CPU utilization. If I type in a SAR 1 space 5, I'm basically visualizing it so I see a little bit of user. Most of that blue down there is that IO wait time that I'm seeing. Let me go back to the workbook. Any questions right now? So to have that on, you need to check config PCP on. Now listen carefully, everybody. You're running the latest PCP. We got a newer version. I need to add this in. Brian, watch for this. Check config PM logger. There's now a check config daemon for PM logger. In your workbook, I do not have that step. Let me see if I can find that step here. I'm just going to the uh, lab manual for instrument your system. I have filed a uh, RFE to document this or something, but in the past there was not a PM logger service, and now there is with this latest release. And I'm just going to get you to a page number here. Okay. Page 3-4 in the lab, 3-4, top of the page, basically step two. After step two, edit, editing the control file. Add a check config dash dash add PM logger. So I don't know how to emphasize that anymore, but on the lab manual, page 3 dash 4, you're not going to have to have a uh, PM logger service. It's not even added. So when I do the dash dash add, that will turn it on as well. And that is a change from prior PCPs. So in the past, all you had to do is edit this control file, but now I also have to make sure that the PM logger service is check config on. 
Also, the metrics that I want to collect are in this config.default. Let me save that for demo here. And tomorrow, we're going to set up the alarm mechanism, PMIE. We'll set off an alarm basically right into the var log messages when a metric goes across a threshold that you set. I also have a couple of cron events, PM logger check and PM logger daily that has to be in place. And then I can do a PCP restart or PMIE start. No boot reboot is required to get PCP working. Now once PCP is working, whether I'm on, by the way, uh, PDM chart will work on Windows, Mac OS, Solaris, Debian, Red Hat, and SLES or SUSE. So once that PMCD is the daemon that's running, performance metric collector daemon, then PMInfo-T will print out all the statistics I can get. I generally like to print that out and get familiar with it depending upon the OS, even kernel level changes. So this PMCD has to be running, plus any what's called a performance metric domain agent. Let me type that out here. And that's just another data collector to add in additional data. So some of these other collectors, we're going to, uh, actually I'm not going to use any of these, but there is one for X XVM and there's one for uh, NFS. But we're not going to use any of those this week. Now the other thing I need for PM Logger is to set up a config.default for the metrics that I want to collect. So in this case, I'm taking 10-minute samples, collecting my CPU information, my memory information, and my swap. Notice there's no disk information in this example. I also have an access control list for this data. Now, I personally just go in and edit the script by hand or edit this file by hand, but there is a command line uh, prompt tool called pmlogconf that can also configure and make sure you got clean syntax for this file. Now, in lab, there is a config.sys file. Uh, let me put it down here. For lab, we have a home guest sysa underscore labs labs 03 underscore instrument config.sysa file. So I've already got a config.sysa file for you drop into place. Let me get the demo here in a minute. So PM, PCP and PMCD are reading data out of slash proc. There's also additional probes from performance metric domain agents that can add data. And then I talk to PMCD, I can get ASCII values from PMVAL. This is a real useful GUI here, PMG Sys. It's the only way to see the whole system at once. I'm going to be using PM Chart Heavy tomorrow. And again, PMIE is an alarm mechanism. I would have called it PM Alarm. And basically, there is a config file for it, and we're going to set that up tomorrow. There is a little bit of a lab on it today, but I'm going to demo it tomorrow and use PMIE comp to set up these rules to say when I go across a threshold, it will write into var log messages. Now, I'm going to have to take ESP off this list because we're not using ESP anymore. But I also need to warn you, uh, PMCD has nothing to make sure it's still running anymore. So in particular, Brian, I have my own script to restart PMCD if it dies. And PCP doesn't come with its own. So with ESP gone, we need something to make sure that PMCD is still running. It could get hit by the out-of-memory killer or things of that sort. The other thing then is my archives. so that I can save a month's worth of data. So I'm going to configure PM Logger and set up a config.default. Again, in our case, it was a 
.sysa file, set up a cron event to make sure PM logger is always running, and there's also a PM logger daily to clean up the files in that directory. And all the data is going to go in var log PCP, PM logger host name, whatever the host name is. Process accounting. There is a, actually this now is called the ACK package. It's no longer the PS ACK package. I don't consider it very useful. It doesn't give me any summary reports. Now, in your case, I'm assuming University of Alberta, you have gold. Are you using gold? That usually comes with Moab Torque. The package I'm going to use is SGI's CSA package. This originally came from Cray. Now, it is not officially supported, but it is still open source, and I still use it because it gives me lots of good data. And it also requires a job package. So I have to go back to the ProPack 7 SP1 distribution to be able to get a CSA. And I'm going to put that up in place, too. So accounting records get written when a process terminates, when it's exiting. If it's zero or if it never terminates, you won't get any records. OpenMP, pthreads, and MPI get one record per thread. And again, batch systems have their own accounting tools, so we're going to be using the uh, Torque ASCII flat file and take a look at that. So Linux accounting, you basically have to just touch this file, var account PAC. If it's there, accounting is turned on. If it's not there and it's null, it's turned off. And there is a log rotate event to keep that file small and to compress it after it's been there for a while. But again, the thing I don't like about the Berkeley stuff is there's no consolidation reports. You have to write your own. And you don't get very much data. Your two key key commands are last com and SA. So I am a CSA fan, and I'm going to put it on my system. I do not require, Brian might want it, but I don't require University of Alberta to use it, but I'm just going to use it in class. Started off in Cray Unicos back in 85, was put into SGI IRIX back in 97, 98 and was retired a couple of years ago and basically dropped from Performance Suite. But I still get the source and I still get RPMs. So let me just flip through some of this stuff. I have to put in a hook for PAM to be able to call a job ID to get a job ID for everything. Let me save that for demo. So these are written in the VAR CSA day. 100 or 320 bytes for every process that terminates. The CSA COM command is what prints that binary PAC into ASCII. And I don't care about recycled right now, not our concern. But there is a CSA run report that generates my consolidated reports. You might run CSA run once a day. And then you get a var CSA sum RPRT file for ASCII and also some binary files. So we get this PAC file, we do a CSA run, it leaves everything in the sum directory. Also part of CSA is a do disk script that will generate disk accounting usage. So at the end of the day, you get these four binary files. Then at the end of the month, you could run CSA period and consolidate those into a fiscal report. And the R says remove the scratch binary files to save disk space. Uh, for diagnostics, again, I'm not going to concern myself too much with this right now, but if there are errors that go into VAR CSA night, look for anything that begins with a capital E. There is a state file in there that should have the letters complete in caps. And if there's problems, you might find your problem data in VAR CSA work, month, day, hour, minute. For example, uh, timestamp problems or the prior run not completed successfully will leave the state file in something other than complete. you got to fix those problems or simply edit the state file, get it back to complete, and then run again. I don't want to emphasize this too much. Let me flip. 321, though, is relevant to me. This is why I like CSA accounting, the top thing here. I'm saying 
this report was 1,241 seconds of wall clock time. 1,289 was doing user code, three seconds in the kernel. I also have an 800 megabyte high water mark. And I read 247 meg and wrote 117 meg of I.O. I see the number of read and write system calls. And this is very useful to me, wait time. So I'm able to see this thing waited for a CPU three and a half seconds and it waited for disk 85 seconds. Okay, so I see that this thing is CPU bound because of all the CPU time up here, but I still had IO8 associated with this particular run. Also in this report, then I get page faults. Minor page fault says I had to go to the kernel to get a page address. Major page fault said I had to go to disk to get something, including your executables. And lastly, CSA does have the ability of setting up charges or system billing units. So let me get past that. There is a CSA com. I'm going to be using this tomorrow to get statistics on each individual process. So JA was for the job. This is now on a per process basis. The problem is, is you get a line wrap here. The line wraps are no fun. So being able to line up the headers is not much fun. Sometimes I will go to the smallest font I can get. But for example, this block IO wait time total here, looks like I see 29 seconds here. 51 seconds there and four seconds there. But look over here for my mean memory size, mean high water mark. That looks like this one here. So it's kind of hard to work with a wrap going on in the report. But I'm going to use JA and CSA comp through the week. PBS accounting, again, you're going to be in Torque instead of PBS, server priv. There's an accounting directory, and I've got some scripts that I passed off to University of Alberta. We can get them running this week. But a given job, we're going to get the job got queued up. So here's job ID 4. Then it got started and what it requested. And then it exited or finished. And down here, then, we get the uh, what it actually used. Then I've got a PBS WLA command that will convert that into an ASCII report. Now PBS does have something called PBS portal that can plot this data. I'm not going to care about that here. Gold, which I haven't really worked with. Ganglia, I want to get into Ganglia tomorrow. I'm going to install Ganglia on my UV. And that's about it. In lab. I'm going to have you get NTP working so our clocks are right. I want to make sure the SAR is right. I want to get PCP working. And then I'm going to get CSA working. This should take me about 15 minutes. Does anybody have any questions right now? So let me go share my desktop. By the way, one of those other GUIs, PMG Sys, can show me what my system's doing. And all I see are the blues with the IO wait time going on. And I can see SDB disk busy there with the yellow. Let me close that off. So let me see. Okay, so I'm I'm on my system Floyd 3. I'm going to do a RPM-QA and grep for Systat. And I also loaded a GUI for Systat called Systat-ISAG. It's a tickle GNU plot GUI for SAR data. Next, I'm just going to type in the SAR command. And I do have SAR being collected. And I can see that it is on 10-minute samples. I'm actually looking at the timestamp on the seconds to see if anything was after the one second mark, and I don't see anything there. I'm going to go into var log SA, and here's where my files are. 
So the 13th, the typical day, and the 14th, we're at about uh, 1.5 meg right now. And again, it's a small CPU count, small disk farm. You can also see that I've got some SAR files here for ASCII as well. Okay. Notice that there's no month, day, or year, month type of directory here. I'm going to do a check config. Boot.sysstat. And that is on. I'm going to do a service. Boot.sysstat. Stop. Okay. And one of the things it does is remove a cron tab. I'm going to go into itsy cron.d, and I do not see anything in there for sysstat. Let me do a service sys boot sysstat start, and now I see it ran sadc ls-l also shows I have a link into this file now. So that's what the service start did. Let me also do a SAR command, and that also created a Linux restart message. If I were to reboot, that would have done the same thing, giving me a Linux restart. So basically stopping and starting the service gives me a timestamp of when the uh, service was started, basically. Okay. If I take a look at this, sysstat. Again, every 10 minutes, and I'm collecting all CPU, disk, and uh, interrupt activity. And then here, notice that I'm running this every five hours or so. Five in the morning, 11 in the morning, every six hours. It's, it's firing up just before the hour tick, just before 6 a.m., 12 a.m., again, four times during the day. I myself would probably change that. I'm going to do it here and just make it, well, let me make it 55, but let me make it just before midnight so I only get one ASCII report during the day. The other thing I'm going to do is go into ITSI syscon or SysStat. And in there is also this sysstat file. And I'm going to go in and change the history now. If I go more than 28 days, then we get a subdirectory. I'm going to go 31 days. And I also want to change the compression to say only get compress after 31 days. So now let me do a service uh, boot.sysstat restart. Let's see if that takes it. Go into var log sa. Oop, don't have anything there yet. Let me just try this again. I don't know what that did. Let me do a stop, then a start. And I'm waiting for a, there we are. So the restart didn't really do anything. But the stop and the start now created me a new subdirectory. And we can see that SA15 is now linked into that subdirectory here. Any questions on that? I do have tools to plot that SAR data, but let me go back to my desktop here. And I'm just going to try an ISAG. And this is standard Linux. It is a tickle GNU plot GUI. And I'm just going to take chart and plot my uh, CPU utilization down here. And now I can see the same thing we were seeing before. I await is the brown here. A little bit of system time every now and then, and I'm looking since midnight. ISAC cannot look at more than one file. If I click over here and go to yesterday's file, I can see midnight to midnight, but I can't see more than one file at once. Let me try my memory. And here I can see memory free was pretty small. Typically looks like about 20 gig. 
That is ISAG. Again, there was an RPM that I did for that. Sysstat-ISAG. Any questions? The SAR is looking good right now. Now I'm going to do performance copilot or PCP. So let me just do a check config PCP. That, oops, that doesn't look good. That's a run level, not an on or an off. Oh, I'm going to have to check on that. It does look like it will get turned on on run level three and five. I also have a PCP SGI service there for UV statistics and stuff. Let me go into var log PCP. And there is not even a PM logger directory right now. Let me do an LS on PM's TD, go into that thing. And I'm just going to check the log here. And here, right here, is a UV PMDA that's being fired up to get to pub statistics. In fact, it even turned it on on its own, which it normally was not doing in prior releases. That's why uh, linkstat-uv did not require a dash A. Something turned it on. Let me go into itc, was it rc5.d? Hit C in it dot D R C five dot D and look for PCP and it is there as a start and uh down here for the stop for the kill. Let me do a PS dash E in grep for PMCD and that thing is running. So I was a little bothered by the check config. showing a uh, 35, which is more of a run level, than a on or an off. Okay, so PMCD appears to be running. What I want to do now is PM logger. Before I do that, let me go into var log PCP. And note there is no PM logger directory there. I'm going to go into var lib PCP config PM logger and in here are some example configuration files but I'm going to create my own I've got one in home guest to say labs labs 03 I believe oops instrument and then I've got a config.sysa. So I'm going to put that in my current directory. I'm going to do a more on it, config.sysa. And in here, it's a five-minute interval, and then I'm collecting a whole bunch of statistics and listing them on individual lines, including XFS statistics and even UV statistics. Okay, now I have to edit the control file. And even though there is a uh, check config service, I still have to configure this file. I'm going to uncomment localhost. It's going to be my primary logger. And it's going to save it in PM logger directory with a local host name. And I'm going to change this to be sysa. And that's the file that I just grabbed from my lab tarball for the class. PS-E ref for PM logger, not there. I'm going to do a service. Oh, before I do that, PS-E pipe grep PMIE, and PMIE is up and running. So PM logger is not. Now let me do a service PCP stop. There is a restart, but I'm just going to try this. And then a start. 
and PS-E, grep for PM logger, and it's not there. Check config, grep PM logger. The PM logger event is off. So I'm going to do a check config, dash, dash, add PM logger. And again, for some reason, this 3.5, I'm going to have to dig into more. But I do have it on. Okay. Now let me try the uh, service restart. And this time it does say starting PM logger. The other one just gave me starting PM CD. Now if I do a PS-E and let me do EF pipe grep PM logger. I do now see that it's running and it collect is collecting data based upon my config.sysa. And then also in my current directory now, let me not hear var log PCP. P, let's go to that directory. There's now a PM logger directory. Let me go into PM logger. And there's a host name. And now I've got data in here. Now, I don't have a whole lot of data yet, but this is the file that I'm going to look at tomorrow. So I now have archive going. And let me go back into slash var lib pcp config pm logger. I want to copy this cron tab here, the itc cron d pcp.cron, we'll call it, and then I change permissions, 600 on itc cron.d, pcp.cron. So hopefully that PCP cron event, if we take a look at it, all it's doing is running PM logger daily and PM logger check to make sure that PM logger is always up and running. I'm not going to go into PMIE at this point. I just want to go to my last piece here. But I've got SAR turned on. I've got PCP and PM logger turned on and working. The last piece, and then we're done for the day, is my uh, CSA. I'm going to go home, guest, CSA labs. And I've got two RPMs. CSA. Let me do IVH. CSA RPM and a job RPM. I'm going to install those two RPMs. And also, let me do a uh, check config CSA. That's off. I want to turn it on. Let's do a check config job on. And now I'm going to do a, well, let me do First of all, let me go into itsypam.d, and I need to add a hook in here to call the job library. We typically add it in the common dash session. And I'm just going to copy this last line here and call job instead. Now, you got to be careful here. If I make a typo in this, I may not be able to log in and fix things, in which case I'd have to go uh, rescue mode to be able to fix any typos in a PAM file. So you got to be real careful about that. I'm going to do a service job start and then a service CSA start. Now, I have not gone through PAM yet, so if I do a JSTAT command, I say there is no job ID associated with this. So let me log in again. If I do a JSTAT, now that I've come in through PAM, I now have a job ID. JSTAT-A gives me all the job IDs. And at this point, then, any sort of command I run should be in the accounting file. I'm going to do a CSA com and put a tail on it. And there's the two JSTATs and the LS that I just ran and how long they took. 
So I now have CSA accounting in place. I'm going to go into VAR run, no, let me go into VAR CSA and go into the day directory. So everything that I do here is going to show up in bytes here. I'll have to figure out what the size of that is for the workbook. CSA COM is what converts that into ASCII. And we're going to use that tomorrow as well. Also, I could have done a JA, which is going to start job accounting, and then do things. Let me go into a home guest a real WL. Let me just try running. Let me do a G Fortran dash O three on code two dot F. Compile it. We're going to get into compilers Wednesday. Now let me run it as a child of time. and see what we got. Again, code 2 is going to be the main code reference that we're going to play with. And i got to be careful, that thing may be taking 100 seconds here. Let me bring this up. I'm going to bring up top. Oh, it's finished. 23 seconds is what it came in at with optimization. I know I can get that down to seven to nine seconds, and that's what we're going to do later in the week. So it was 23 seconds of real time, 21 seconds of user time, and 1.9, almost two seconds of system time or kernel time. Now if I do my CSA COM-N on code, no, it was A dot out in this case, I can see that same record. Let me do a dash. T, uh, big M, little W, there are some other things, I for I O, and then I can see 23 seconds of real, 2 seconds of system time, 21.4 seconds of user time, it read 5K, it wrote nothing, it waited for a CPU a quarter of a second, no disk I.O. wait, no swap wait, and if I do a JA-ES, this will give me my summary. So ever since I started that first JA has been 103 seconds. My program was 25 seconds. Got two seconds of system time. Maximum high water memory mark, I got up into 126 meg in size. I read eight meg and only wrote a half a meg. Here's the number of read system calls and write system calls I did. And again, very little CPU weight, a little bit of disk I weight, half a second. Any questions on that? Now, one last thing, and then we're done. I'm going to do a, before I do that, go into var CSA sum. There are no reports in there right now, so I'm going to do a CSA run. It's going to take all of that data, and I now have a ASCII report and some binary files. I'm going to do more on RPRT. Now, I might tune this later to be able to get more data, but now I can see anything that ran only once was called other. I had 10 programs that amounted for what we got there, 10 seconds, uh, total CPU time right here, 26 seconds total. No, I'm sorry, that's in minutes, 26 minutes total, to 10 minutes just in this other and one of them was the a.out that we got, but we don't see that here. And then there's some other information in there as well that we really don't care about. Okay, that pretty much takes care of my instrumentation. I'll worry about CSA, or I'm sorry, worry about uh, PBS tomorrow. Any questions? I'm done for the day. We'll go back to the workbook here. Okay, so your assignment is labs 2.1.
2, which is the inventory. And lab 3, which is the uh, instrument. Metrics lab 4 is optional. Okay. Any questions? I'm done for the day. Not hearing anything. I'm going to stop the recorder. <laughs>